My name is Beth Liebert. I'm a product manager for Google Analytics, and I'm really excited that I get to be here to bring the tool that I spend so many hours in deeply every day to all of you guys. Plus, I get to eat some pepper crab out of it all, too, so it's not so bad. Uh, before I worked at Google, I worked at a design company called IDEO doing human factors research. Um, and that kind of data that we live in was much more about stories and pictures and anecdotes. Very different than the world of quantitative data that I live in now. And while we generated a lot of ideas, one of our big challenges was convincing the decision maker that this opportunity, opportunity that we saw was really solid when it was based on this touchy-feely stuff. But that's what I love about working on Google Analytics. It gives you data to prove your point. And when you're trying to make a case for something, there's nothing quite as persuasive as using data to get there. Now this is analytics interface from 2005. You can see we've come a long way since then. When we first released analytics, it was a huge event in the web analytics industry. It was the first time that anyone had offered a sophisticated analytics tool for free to anyone. And it made a huge splash. The press picked it up and was excited that finally something that had cost thousands of dollars per year to own previously was now available to anyone. And we've come a long way since then. We've added a lot of new features, made a lot of changes to the product, but one thing that hasn't changed is the product philosophy. A lot of people wonder why Google can continue to offer such a powerful tool for free, especially as it gets more and more powerful. But the answer is actually quite straightforward. We've noticed that when our users have access to full transparency about their site and about their online marketing campaigns, they see how truly effective online marketing can be. And with, empowered with that data, we see that that's good for our users and it's good for Google. The problem is, it turns out it's not that easy. When you get into web analytics, it can be very overwhelming. You have a lot of questions and you're expecting answers out of it. You're expecting it to solve all your problems. And instead, you find a whole soup of metrics burdened on down and you don't know where to start. Now, you web analytics folks may be familiar with data and may be ready to jump in. To a lot of people, this is very intimidating. But where you start is really quite simple. And you guys probably are experts about this. It always starts with one thing, your goals. What are you trying to achieve? Now, this may seem really obvious to you guys, but I've seen the data, and I know very few of you are setting up goals in your accounts. This is the first rule of analytics. If you aren't starting with your goals, don't even open the interface yet. Start to think about what your business is trying to accomplish. Now, depending on the type of site you have, it could mean a lot of different things. If you're an e-commerce site, it's completed orders. If you're a content sharing site, it could be visits with uploads, and so on and so forth. Now, these primary goals are your bottom line conversions. This is what your business is really trying to drive. The problem is this. This is what 2% looks like. 2% is the average conversion rate of e-commerce sites online. And as you can see, it's not very much data. If you're only measuring this 2% and spending 90% of your time looking at just that data, what are you missing out on? Well, if that 2% are your primary goal conversions, that's your bottom line drivers, then that 98% represents your opportunity. So how can we divide that 98% into something that we can actually measure? What are the things that are supporting or getting in the way of that ultimate bottom line conversion? Well, if you think about how, why people come to your site, they probably come for a lot of different reasons, not just to convert. Some may be coming to do product research. Some may come to sign up for an account. Some may come looking for a support number or something for help. Others tried to check out, but they weren't unsuccessful. And then another percentage of them bounced. When you start to divide these up into secondary goals of your site, you start to ask much more specific questions and it becomes a lot more interesting than just a bunch of 98% of blank data. You can ask, are users engaged with my site? What was the flow like for them to sign up for an account? Were they able to find that contact info? And for the users that were unsuccessful, what happened? What is getting in their way from them becoming a successful user? 
I, call, I like to call these secondary conversions. These secondary conversions are the type of events that support your primary conversion. When you start to measure these, you measure the entire cycle. So if we have an e-commerce site with these secondary conversions, you know, all of, all of these different sites have their own version of secondary conversions. So here's my first takeaway. Optimize your secondary goals to support these, for these primary conversions. Not only will you have more data to work with, but by optimizing both the beginning, before a conversion, and after the conversion, that full cycle, you make your customers happier, and ultimately, that drives your bottom line. So let's apply this to my site. This is a real site, googlestore.com. It's where you should all go right after this talk and buy yourself a Google t-shirt. And this is real data that I'm going to show from this site. So this is an e-commerce site. Um, so let's, let's look into some of these secondary goals and see how I can apply them. So in the profile settings, I can apply up to 20 goals per profile. So let's add a new goal. I can see there's three different goal types. One is a URL destination type. That's like a receipt page. If someone reaches this page, that's considered a success event. And the two other ones are engagement goals. How engaged are users on your site? How much time are they spending? How, much, how many pages are they visiting? So let's set up a users visiting greater than four pages goal on my site and apply it to my data. So there I'm looking at the goal seven's completion report. And I can see my goal visited greater than four pages had 53,000 conversions. Fantastic. I'm measuring secondary goals just like I'm supposed to, but unfortunately, it still doesn't really mean anything. It's just a point of data, and I have no idea if this is good or bad or no context around it. And without context, you're not going to get to opportunities. There's a lot of different ways you can add context to data, so let's start with a few straightforward and basic ones. First of all, you can compare it to your past performance. So here I'm opening the date picker and clicking compare to past. Now I can compare this month's performance against last month's performance. So right away I see the orange line is my past performance and the blue line is my current performance. And if I look closely, I've got some work to do. Looks like this month my conversion rate is actually 40% lower than last month. I'm measuring conversions, but I'm not doing such a good job of optimizing it. So let's dig a little deeper. Let's see if it's really something going on with my site, or is there something greater in the industry influencing this trend? To answer that question, I can go to the benchmarking report, where I can see various site metrics compared to other sites in the industry who have opted in to share their data. The blue line is my site, and the orange line is the industry site. Now, by default, I can compare against all sites in Google Analytics, or I can scope it down to just my competitors. So I open category list, and I select apparel sites, since I'm selling a lot of t-shirts. Let's see what my site's performance compares to other apparel sites on the web. Maybe their trends for pages for visit have gone down as well. So here I'm looking at just apparel sites of similar size. Now, remember this goal I'm trying to optimize is pages per visit. I'm trying to get up to four and trying to make that as high as possible. Well, it looks like in the lower left corner, pages per visit metric, let's look a little closer. So for my goal, visited greater than four pages, not doing so great here either. <laughs> looks like I'm 60% worse than the benchmark across the industry for pages per visit, 2.8 versus 7.36 for the industry. So now I've clearly established that I have work to do. I've clearly established that there is a problem I need to fix. So now it's time to get a little bit deeper and figure out some ideas for how I might fix it. I'm going to follow the suggestion and go into the depth of visit report and see if I can find out a little bit more about the pages per visit numbers on my site. Right away, something jumps out at me. Most people are never getting past that very first page. Now, when someone visits one page and then abandons the site, we call it a bounce. So about 65% of my users are bouncing off my site. It's great that they're visiting and it inflates my visit numbers, but those aren't valuable visits. Those aren't visits that drive my bottom line. I want to minimize those bounce numbers as much as I can and get them through to the site. So what is going on? Well, if someone is reaching my site and then leaving, I want to know what pages they're reaching. Maybe I have a really bad landing page or something and they don't really like it. So let's look at my landing pages report and see what I can find out. 
So by looking at my landing pages against each other using the site average visualization, I can see right away which are my biggest offenders. Now I know exactly where to start looking to make improvements on my site. These three top pages are, my, are driving a lot of bounces. And that's where I should start my research if I'm trying to make it any better. So now that I've pinpointed the problem, it's time to dig a little bit deeper. This is a great place where you can use segments. So let's look at our biggest offenders and let's choose this search page to start with. This is what it looks like. Now upon first glance, it doesn't look so bad. I mean, it's got lots of pictures of products and lots of navigational links. Uh, I can't imagine why people would come here and then leave. Like, what is going on in their head? What are they not finding when they reach this page? I could look at the all traffic sources report to see where they're coming from. But it doesn't really tell me much. I mean, it's not telling me about visitors specifically to that page. And after all, that's what I'm here to optimize. So let's create a segment. I've created a segment with a landing page that it matches that search page that I'm trying to optimize. And then I set page views less than or equal to one. So now I'm creating a segment of bounced visits to that specific landing page. And then I'm going to apply it to some reports and see if there's anything special about that particular segment of traffic. So let's go back to that all traffic sources report and see where this particular segment of users is coming from. I'm going to call this the high bounce rate search page segment. So I apply it to my report right away. Amazing. They're all coming from almost one single refer, blogger. This one refer is sending me all this bouncing traffic. Now it's nice to have just one offender here because it's very easy to target and figure out how to fix. Now I have a much better idea of the mindset of someone coming to this page and leaving. After all, if I'm a blogger, is this the kind of merchandise that I'm looking for? Would it, wouldn't it be more appropriate to look for something like blogger gear? By segmenting down my data, I've been able to ask a very specific question. When you're ready to ask very specific questions, you can't look at overall data anymore. You have to look at very specific data. So now I have a like, very actionable thing to do. I can change this landing page so that blogger visits from blogger end up here instead of the general search page. But you know, you don't have to take my word for it. If you don't think that's a good recommendation, you could try different page variations with Website Optimizer. Then you could really let the data show you what your most successful combination is going to be. So let's review this analytics journey we've been on. We started with a very basic question, a good question. Am I selling stuff? At least we started there with your goals, right? Unlike many of you, but that's gonna change, right? Then finally, I got a little bit more specific and supported my secondary goals. How many users are visiting more than four pages? Finally, I gave that goal context and compared it against my own performance and the performance of the industry. That's where I established that I had a real problem and where I could fix it. Finally, I looked, I found exactly the place to start. This was very helpful and I'm a great insightful analyst at this point. But the, the key that really made me into a great analyst was that I took action. I found that landing page and I made a difference and I invited change into this website and my business. It's great to be an analyst and today you're gonna learn a lot of different skills about how to be a really good analyst. But at the end of the day, it's not enough. You have to be an activist. Take the insights you learn and liberate them. Share them with your colleagues. Share them with the people who don't want to get into the data and who are scared about jumping into that soup and give them exactly what they're looking for. Invite change because this is what Google Analytics is all about. It's about empowering you with data to make change in your organization. Now in Singapore and in the Southeast Asian region in particular, this is an amazing opportunity for you to get a competitive edge and be online savvy before a lot of your competitors catch up. A lot of the speakers that we have today have learned this lesson and live it fully in their business. And as we've seen in a lot of uh, more mature markets in, on the online world, it's been proven that 
those with the best command of data win. And finally, one last request for all of you. There's a lot of people from Google today who work very hard to make Analytics product better every day. And we want to hear from you about how we can make it better and better. So come and find me or come and find any of these great Google people. A lot of them are sitting in the left-hand side in the front here. And tell us your analytics story. Thanks. <laughs>